Residual risk, a cardiovascular risk, it's a clinically relevant problem in 2022. And it's defined as the macrovascular risk of events uh, once you treat your patients uh, with the best current evidence-based medical care. The residual uh, cardiovascular risk is due to modifiable risk factors such as lipid-related risk factors, inflammation, thrombosis, and some risk factors that are not modifiable. Now, in the past 20 years, we've been uh, progressively more effective to, for example, correct one of these risk factors, LDL cholesterol. We've been able to reduce the risk, the LDL cholesterol by 35% in the mid 90s of last century with the progressively new and more effective pharmacological intervention, including the recent DCSK9 inhibitors, our possibility to reduce the LDL cholesterol grew up to 85%. Now, despite such a great effectiveness uh, by the current available pharmacological approaches, a residual risk of events in these patients is up to 44. So it's a clinically relevant despite a major effectiveness in reducing LDL cholesterol. An example of a residual cardiovascular risk comes from this very recent study where LDL cholesterol was put down to 30 in those treated effectively with a PCSK9 inhibitor. Patients with diabetes characterized by uh, an increased triglyceride on top of high LDL cholesterol on this very effective treatment, 30 milligrams of LDL cholesterol remain with the greater number of events as compared to those without diabetes simply treated with high intensity study. So this is a residual risk and it's relevant. And those with diabetes might be due also to a persistent increase in triglyceride. This study showed that there is a large population actually uh, uh, in Italy studied uh, almost 60,000 patients uh, studied according to the triglyceride and looking at atherosclerotic cardiovascular events and overall mortality. Those with triglyceride between 150 and 500, so mild hypertriglyceridemia, had a significant increase atherosclerotic cardiovascular event rate as compared to those with normal triglyceride and a significant increase by 60% increase overall mortality as compared to those with triglyceride levels below 150. Um, a similar, very interesting observation was done in France uh, with the FAST uh, MI registry that included almost 10,000 patients that were recruited after admission to the hospital for an acute myocardial infarction. When the FAST MI population was selected according to a recent trial criteria called REDUCE IT, where people well treated for LDL but persistently hypertriglyceridemic were selected, well, when patients in FAST MI were selected, for having high triglyceride, and I like to keep in mind that uh, those people were well treated for LDL, hypertriglyceridemic patients after an acute coronary syndrome in fast MI had a significantly greater risk of cardiovascular disease, almost 37% as compared to 30% of those in the same registry without hypertriglyceridemia. So I think uh, uh, to manage properly and effectively atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk in 2022, we should envision and plan two steps. The first step, very simply, aggressively treat a very well-known risk factor such as, for example, blood pressure or LDL cholesterol in our case. Let's keep in mind that there is a residual cardiovascular risk that is clinically relevant that might be due not only to LDL, but a number of other components. For example, persistent inflammations, prothrombotic phenotype, persistent elevation in triglyceride, like in the FAST-MI registry, with an increased cardiovascular risk or high elevated LP delay. For these patients, we have to plan a step two, and that's a specific step to reduce residual cardiovascular risk. We can work on LDL cholesterol, we can work on inflammation, we can work on the prothrombotic risk, we can work on tra elevated triglyceride. Now, speaking about elevated triglyceride, recently I mentioned reduce it was a trial, secondary prevention, persistent elevation triglyceride, well controlled LDL. Four grams of icosapentatil were able to reduce significantly the risk by working not only on triglyceride, but also on uh, platelet aggregation as well as inflammation. So it looks like we found, uh, uh, I can't say a silver bullet, but something that works on multiple components of residual risk. I think we do have the tools to manage cardiovascular residual risk. We have to apply it. And I think the step one, step two process is a very simple one, very effective to manage cardiovascular risk in 2022.